Welcome all to another edition of RGN Commodore 64 Roundup, where we take a broad overview of the current gaming events for the Commodore 64. This episode is a little different to previous roundups, as we focus on games that are either work in progress or in the final stages of testing. But before we get to those titles, let's take a look at some of the games recently released. First up we have Brick's Revenge, a breakout style of game that introduces a couple of alternative approaches to the genre. The aim of the game is not to eliminate all bricks, but instead it's to smash through enough bricks to open up the goal zone and then fire a ball into that zone in order to advance through its 12 levels. There are no power-ups to collect, and the only thing you'll find falling down your way are kamikaze bricks, laser fire, missiles and giant bricks. Getting hit by one of these results in the immediate loss of one of your lives. You do not immediately lose life if you let the ball slip by you though. You are given three misses in a row before one of your game lives is taken away. What this means is that you can miss the ball on two consecutive occasions, but as long as you hit the ball on the next occasion it bounces back to you, the miss counter gets reset, allowing you to miss the ball again on two occasions without penalty. The production values on the game are quite good overall, and the gameplay is quite smooth. Ghost Town is an extended port of the Commodore 16 game released back in 1985. A top-down puzzle arcade adventure game, your objective is to find items located across the game world that will help you solve puzzles so that you can make your way through to the final battle with the evil wizard, Belegro. The game is very unforgiving, any mistake will lead to the player's death but it's well worth a play if you enjoy this genre. Vega is a horizontal shooter that has its origins from a popular 2017 scene demo. Utilising its original impressive Petsky style graphics, Atwood Studios brings the demo into a full gaming experience. The game was originally released in a digital form a few months ago, but Protovision has announced that they are producing a limited edition collector's card of the game. Pre-orders have been open for a few weeks now and stock is starting to run out. The game itself is a bit of fun and interesting to look at, but just note that it effectively only contains one level that can be completed in around 4 minutes. As promised at the start of this episode, we're going to spend some time looking at working progress game projects currently taking place. Starting off with Marvin Hardy's level 1 demo of Chaos Engine for the Commodore 64. We took a glimpse at this late last year, and the project has pretty much been on hold since then, but Marvin has recently put some time into placing some of the Rockman enemies into their starting positions. What is here does look quite nice, but I still sense that this project is unlikely to go beyond it being a level 1 demo. Who could forget the excitement that the original Limbo 64 demo caused within the scene a couple of years back? While well, Soren the developer has recently released another teaser clip showing the rolling boulder section of the game in action. Development on this project has also pretty much been at a pause for a while, and it still has quite a bit to go. Perhaps the 2024 completion date revealed in the initial demo is spot on. Andy Vassi has spent the past 10 months or so working on an unofficial sequel to the budget Mustatronic game Chiller. 
Chiller 2 is a single screen platformer with the objective to go around collecting a required number of crosses while trying to avoid the various zombies, ghouls, witches and other bad things. The playable demo of the game shows it to have been produced very well with some great visual and frantic arcade fun. Development of Chiller 2 has more or less been completed and is awaiting testing, but this has been delayed due to the tester's current health issues. The game will be made available for free as a digital download when it does become ready. Tiny Quest is a very nice looking game that will push your arcade gaming skills to the limit. The version on your screen is from February this year and which sees your objective being to collect the gold coins on its screen and reach the exit on the other side before the energy counter expires without running into a hazard. Simple to play, hard to master, but a whole lot of fun along the way. My understanding is that Tiny Quest has undergone and continues to undergo quite a bit of a revision to it, and is likely to differ in a number of ways when it's finally completed. The game is expected to see a commercial release courtesy of Bitmatsop. Here's a real nice exclusive of a top-down goal objective exploration game being developed by the Retro Brothers called Volcano Towers. The game is very early in its development, but at the moment we can see that you can select from a multiple characters to play, all of which would have their own specific storylines and game objectives. Volcano Towers looks to feature different game environments, a nighttime mode, and some humour thrown in for good measure. This will be an interesting project to keep track of, and I'm looking forward to track its progress over the next year or so. If you're looking for a nice little collectible, then you can't go far wrong than with this gorgeous looking commemorative coin celebrating the Commodore 64. Seven Sided Mint is offering these C64 themed 50 pence shaped coins coming in both gold plated and silver plated mirror finishing. Available individually or as part of this special deluxe collector set, these coins are really impressive and you will not be disappointed with having these as part of your retro showcase. Alright, to finish up, let's take a look at some big titles that have been completed or are in the last phase of testing and will be awaiting a release in the upcoming months. The Icon 64 team are back with another enticing release, the Isle of the Cursed Prophet. The game is set to offer an explore and collect style of gameplay as you move your character across an island looking for keys, jade stones and many other items in order to find a way to resurrect the love of your life back from the dead. I've been privileged to have early access to this game and I can confirm that the Isle of the Cursed Prophet is game of the year material. The game features intuitive controls, looks great and there are plenty of secrets throughout to uncover. The Isle of the Cursed Prophet will be released via Cytronic Software. You can expect a showcase video on the game from this channel as we get closer to release date.
Antonio Savona is back to producing great original titles with his upcoming sliding puzzle based game, Boxy Moxie. The objective of the game is to control two cat characters who I presume are called Boxy and Moxie and guide them around the game screen to allow the blue cat to collect all of the skull monsters on screen. The trick to the game is that Boxy and Moxie's movements cease only when they run into an object. Completing a level within a set number of moves results in three stars being given. You can take more moves to complete a level, but this will result in less stars being collected. Completing most levels within a requested number of moves seems to be the main challenge to the game as unlocking later game worlds will be dependent on the number of stars collected. Antonio has submitted the complete game to RGCD so we just need to wait for them to find the time to get everything ready for release. MW Ultra is a reboot of the original Metal Warrior game released in 1999. The game basically retells the original story in an expanded setting and features greatly enhanced gameplay that benefits from the developer's later titles. Developer Lassie Ordini, who is behind the original Metal Warrior Quadrilogy, Hessian and Steel Ranger, continues to show of his growing knowledge of getting the most out of the C64 by providing a game that has silky smooth gameplay, immersive storytelling and a bucket load of fantastic graphical effects. This is looking to be another game of the year contender. MW Ultra is very close to getting to the gold release stage, with the game being co-published by Protovision and Cytronic Software. You can also expect a showcase of this game as we get closer to its release. Thank you to the developers who provided me with the means to capturing some of the exclusive footage you've seen here today so I could show off their great work. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you're really getting excited with the games that are coming out for our favourite 8-bit computer. I'd love to hear from you which games you're looking forward to. Thank you also to the supporters who have provided RGN with a tip to help with the ongoing financial sustainability of the channel. You guys are champs. If you want to find more C64 content then don't forget to visit the Retro Gamer Nation website. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.